me patting myself on the back or you patting yourself right. on the back. It's the looking at that other person and seeing how far they've come from where they were and that they have completely changed and lifted themselves up. Yeah, that's what yeah. we're here for. I mean, people, you know, a lot of people start practicing either, and not so much for divining, but definitely being root workers, you know, with the idea of how they can get ahead, either through the spell work or through the clients. And that's, you know, you got to make a buck to actually, you know, have all uh, the stuff that you need to do for a practice. But at the same time, that if that's your motivation, you're going to be sadly disappointed for probably a number of years, if ever, because very few people become really, really successful at this type of work. And that's because it's a gift. Gifts aren't given to everybody, but everybody may want to do it. The same thing was with photography. I became a professional photographer. Everybody named mama got a camera and was going to be a professional photographer. But those <laughs> people, there was a lot of people who was like, no. They even created a group called You Are Not a Photographer, putting up <laughs> bad, bad work that people had on their business Facebook pages. So, you know, you got to look at this like, the, first of all, I don't look at divination as my own personal power. Right. I look at divination as a gift of communication with my ancestors, and if I'm really blessed and open, with my querents ancestors. Sometimes my querents ancestors don't show up, but mine do. Mine always do. And yeah. they'd be like, look, this person's on some shit. Or, you know, my, my family, which doesn't always have the best reputation for being cuddly, <laughs> uh, they will pull my coat. They'll be like, no. No, this person is damaged. You got to go real easy on this person. And they helped me. I mean, you know, all of that, all of that stuff where you talking about how your spirit feels and how something just, I hate when people say that. Something just told me, fool, your ancestors told you, your spirits told you, idiot. If you got to say, my guardian angel, somebody told you, not something, somebody told you. And people don't get that. So that's why you have levels to this. You know, you got your muggles. I was like, oh, Shadow was laughing at me. I'm like, we don't ever have muggles here. I don't know. I think we scare muggles. But, um, we, you know, you got, you got your squibs, people that came from magical people but don't really have it at all, which is kind of sad because that's like being, you know, they look at that like as a disability, you know, ma ma magical people. It's like, what happened to you? And then you've got people who are skilled with some things. And I think I'm, I'm there. I'm skilled with some things. And then you got folks that's got everything. And I don't know if that comes through initiation or if they were always like that. But those are the people that are ideal and picked by the ancestors to become priests and priestesses. And yes. you can't say no when you're called like that. You can try. You can try, but I always tell my uh, students, you're going to end up like Jonah. You're going to end up in the belly of the whale, and your belly may not be so nice. Or end you up know. like me, standing there. Pardon? The, I said, or like me, you know, feeling like you're standing there at the bank of a raging river, just watching everything go by, like you're getting ready to tip your toe in that hot bath water to test it. And then spirit mm -hmm. and then comes and in. just kicks you right in the ass and knocks you dead in the center and goes, Damn. have a fun ride. Right, right. Enjoy. <laughs> you could have done this the easy way. You chose to do it the hard way. So, yeah. you know, I'm bullheaded. Thing, I always try to tell my students, don't. Well, I told my daughter this, but my daughter is a teenager. She says, we want to learn some things the hard way. I'm like, why don't you want to learn smart? Why don't you want to learn from somebody who's been more experienced and been through it? You know? Well, you know, sometimes... We have to go through it. You know, sometimes we can't just be given information or given teachings without going through those hard phases in life, which actually forge us, you know, yeah. and temper and yeah. make us stronger. So I think she's you know, on a really good, you know, mindset on wanting to do it that way. Yeah, I get it, but not in the way my teenager was saying it. But I, you know, I get that, and I'll say, you know, I, I often look back because I had all this stuff available to me. My master's degree is in literature, and with concentration in black female writers, I read Toni Morrison, Zora Neale Hurston, Alice Walker, all of oh God, Gloria Naylor, 
I read Mama Day. Yeah, I knew it was uh, root work, but I just the importance of it all didn't hit me, even though it was it really did hit me because, you know, that that was a story. Don't let everybody do your hair. And if you haven't read that book, you should. If I was on the floor crying when it was over. But at the same time, I didn't read it from a magical perspective. And so. Um, you know, I think about when I was younger, I'm like, man, I, I could have been doing this, man. I would love to have 20 years under my belt. And then, you know, my ancestors was like, Fulio, remember what you was like when you was in your twenties? Do you remember who you were married to when you were in your twenties? <laughs> They're like, no. And, you know, cause you got to, I mean, the reason I, I can identify with a lot of my clients is because I've been through it. I, I'll, I'll tell them straight away, no judge. You know, I've done, I, I've done no judgment. I've done a lot of, you know, good, good, great shit and good shit and nice shit and uh, okay. And some, I've done some fucked up shit. And so I can say, you know, hey, I understand it. I, I'll even tell them my stories. This is what I did. And that was not really the way I would ne- really needed to go. I also <laughs> talk about the reasons for things people have gotten very um uh, emotional lately you know now i heard they're taking the n-word out of uh, i think it was tom sawyer mark twain's book and you know that's not exactly what we need to do to end racism no. people are always trying to fix all of the wrong things yeah, and well, that's they try, the thing. they try to you erase know, not the, what the, they the don't blame understand. and the stuff right in front of your face yeah, you when know, they try to erase things that they think offend, without right. realizing and that's not that by doing that, is institutional also, racism, not a book. Yeah, <laughs> but they they also don't realize that when they do that, they're not erasing an issue; they're making it worse. Right, that's but like then saying they'll gaslight you you're not black. You that you're making it worse. You know, or that's like I don't see black. I mean, you don't see black. It's a beautiful color. <laughs> that's a sure way to get cussed out. I'm colorblind. <laughs> no, and that's the other thing. There are beautiful things about cultures. Yes. It's not not just black culture. There are all these all different cultures. cultures in the world and with so many amazing and beautiful things. Now, one thing I can say is what I really enjoy is we were in all of it. You know, I looked at pictures of Africans in China. The other night, I can see blonde haired, blue eyed Africans. I'm looking at them in Australia and everywhere and everywhere we've been colonialized. We've been there for all of those things. So that's why I feel really comfortable exploring different types of magic, um, looking at different cultures, even eating, you know, eating food and things like that. You know, um, I feel a place all over the world at the same time as a weird dichotomy because as black people, there's really no place for us in this world, even in where we were, where we originated. You know, um, you know, one of the things uh, Shadow and I was talking about, you know, this whole thing about getting into magic for me was a matter of matter of my racial consciousness, which has always been intact. I've always been. um a social justice warrior since I was in my twenties. So, you know, a lot of the stuff that I see on the internet, it's not new to me. But one of the things that I was telling shadow is like, you know, where, you know, where in the world can we go and be safe? And then on top of that, let's not throw witch on top of it (laughs) because they'll kill your ass just as quick in Africa for being a witch. Then they will. It probably quicker, you know, than any place else. And it's like, how did we get there? How did missionaries and Christianity poison the minds of the very people who created this? You know, how did they take all of your magic and replace it with basically sit, listen and obey? Yeah, it's it's and it's not just Christianity. You know, I see that in, you know, other traditions, too. I see that in trying to make people conform you know, yeah, I don't see it so much in the power. ATRs, though. I see it in no. the Abrahamic religions. Yes. You know. You know. Um, you know when it's I say Christians, I'm that, lumping them all together. Huh? You know, it's, <laughs> well, <laughs> I, I don't lump them all together, but it, it's, I'm it's the same. I'm just being facetious. Yeah. But, I mean, you sit and you look at some of them, and it's not as much about somebody's own personal power. It's not about, right. you know, drawing upon the energies that create us. Right. It's more as 
be docile, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Just yeah. Sheep. We're sheep. They literally yeah. say it in the word, in the Bible, so, anyway. We're sheep. And we're so supposed to as a diviner, you know, mind our place. As a diviner, what wisdom tips or anything could you give our listeners to help them become better readers and diviners? Well, I think that the first thing, sorry, I dropped something. Um, the first thing is, no, people always want to say that, you know, they're spirit led in readings. The cards have a meaning for a reason. Yes. Okay. Now, what I want people to realize is that they need to know those meanings left and right. And the reason why is, no, it's not because you're going to cold read somebody with information that's from the cards. But what's going to happen is if you are a diviner and you've been given this gift and spirit shows up with a message as it pertains to that particular card or the way the, the whole spread is, you got to be ready to receive that information and translate it to the reading. And so if you don't know the meanings of the cards, then you are going to have a very difficult time when spirit is coming and talking to you and telling you something because it's going to be too much at once. Um, and um, try different things as far as divination is concerned, because we got bones, we've got even oracle cards, we've got runes, uh, different types of shells, different types of traditions, um, you know, try scrying. Um, I have a, a witch in my circle that's a fire scryer. She reads in fire. Oh, I love <laughs> fire scrying. Yeah, she reads in fire, and there's another girl in my circle. She dances with fire. Read for at least 100 people before putting up a... Fa- I have people always putting up Facebook stores, and they don't have any clients. And I'm like, okay, can you help me out here? Okay, do you? what are your services? Um, how much do they cost? Where's your website? You know, because this is the way you do business. Um, and, you know, it's like, you know, you, you don't have all that. And and so, you know, it's OK just to be a diviner. It, you know, you know, I think there's this pressure to go out here and be Internet famous and be well known. And for and once you get there, and that's another thing for the beginning diviner. It's draining. Yes. I, I just recently had to tell people, you know what, I'm going to sit down here for a minute. And pr- primarily because I read for a lot of hard headed ass young people, you know, they they just are stuck in doing what they're doing. And I'm trying to let them know, look, while you're young, get this under control, take care of this, whether it's an initiation that you need to have, whether it's people in your life that you need to have in your life or get rid of, whether it's a career that you've chosen, maybe you need to make some moves or the place where you're living. You know, people um, are in a lot of prisons and a lot of them are personal. And so um, and it's, it's hard, you know, because it, people say, well, don't get all caught up in your work. This is a little different than, say, being a social worker or even a police officer, because you're calling on their ancestors. You're calling on spirits to tell somebody something. So when they get up in you, you know, it's, it takes a lot getting them back up out of you yeah. and being able maybe even to shake off some more of the disturbing things about the reading because you've made a serious spiritual connection. It's not just a job. No, you know, you've typed into, you've tapped into this person's pipeline. Your own ancestors are there, and you know. Also, another thing is, don't read for people who are resistant. If they are coming to you and they don't really, if they if the words out of their mouth is, well, you know, I don't really believe in this. Tell them to go on. Yep, because I agree, hundred percent. Spirits, right? Spirits don't want anybody that doesn't listen to them. But I love it when I loved it when that happened to me the first time. I was at Pagan Pride Chicago, and a guy came up to me and told me what he didn't believe in, and I read him for filth. I read, I was killing him softly with my song, telling the <laughs> whole world. <laughs> and he was his friend was sitting there because I'm like, you really don't want your friend sitting here for this. Oh, he can stay. He can stay. And he was like, dude, can, can you get up and uh, go get something to eat or something? I'll get back with you. That's because I was telling all of his business. I'm like, well, your ancestor said you did this, this, and this. And why did you hit your girlfriend last weekend? And he was just like, that's when he asked his boy to get up. 
<laughs> he was like, okay, well, you got to go because we got to talk about this. <laughs> How yeah. do you know I hit my girlfriend? <laughs> you know, I think it's important. For-